Theosophonic presents Self Center, written by Jackie Carrera. Good morning, madam. Welcome to the Centre of Self Centre. Are you here to release your inner child? Ah, well, you're a teeny bit late. Angel's already started in the blue room. Oh no, it's okay. Don't worry. I'll speak to her now. I'm sure she can squeeze you in. Not sure there's time for the soya milk float, I'm afraid. I might be able to rustle up an elderflower presse if you're desperate. No? Okay, one moment, I'll buzz her. Hi, Angel. Sorry to disturb. There's a late arrival for the workshop. Is it all right if she sneaks in? I'm sure she'll be able to catch up. She's already crying. Fabulous. I'll tell her. Bye. She says it's fine. Down the corridor, first on the left. Leave your things outside the door and grab an etch sketch on your way in, all right? Thank you. Have a good time, madam. We don't have chairs in reception anymore. I do miss mine. Ergonomic leatherette. It was nice. Apparently it's better for my blood pressure, waistline and reincarnation potential. So Angel says, don't ask me why. I am allowed to sit on the chaise long in the purple room during breaks. But that's where they do the rebirthing and I'm not sure they sponge down afterwards. No phone or computer anymore either. Angel doesn't want anything to look corporate or official. She says that people come here to get away from all that and commune with humans, not machines. And that is our mantra, apparently. It's nice, really. I suppose I'd rather be here than stuck behind a desk surrounded by screens. But I do miss the chair. Of course, you've got to have some technology, haven't you? We've got a card machine in the cupboard, a coffee machine in the kitchen, and piped in whale song in the purple room, so you can't get rid of it all. She bought this headset when the phone went Wi-Fi. Means that I can move freely, unfettered by cables and wires. It's top of the range. It doesn't ring in case it upsets the mindfulness meditation. No, instead it vibrates against my head and I press a little button on the side to answer. I'm quite used to it now. (laughs) See? (laughs) Good morning, the centre of self-centre. How can we improve your day? Yes, this is the Centre of Self Centre, Centre for Human Improvement. Well, only one centre actually has a capital C, but I don't know how to pronounce it. You can just use one centre if you like. Oh, that depends how you want to pay, madam. We accept credit cards, debit cards, gift cards, scratch cards, backs, PayPal and electronic transfer. Uh, No, I'm sorry, we can't accept cash. We don't have the relevant safety clearance. Uh, Checks, madam. Do you mean the paper ones? No, I'm sorry, we haven't taken checks since 2005. Are you one of our older, um, I mean, more mature customers? Oh, (laughs) I'm sorry, madam, I couldn't tell because your voice sounded normal. If you'd like to pop in next time you're passing, I could talk you through contactless, if that helps at all. Fabulous. Would you like me to reserve you a place in the meantime? Fabulous. Which course shall I put you down for? Hot yoga? Fabulous. Now, we do advise that you wear appropriate clothing, but if you do happen to forget anything, there is a tenor lady dispenser in the female changing rooms. Could I take your name, madam? 
Mrs. Henderson. That's all done, madam. Thank you for calling the Centre of Self Centre. Ciao. That's the fourth oldie I've booked in for hot yoga. Must remember to top up the dispenser. Welcome to the Centre of Self Centre, sir. Is this your first visit to us? Fabulous. I'm afraid if you're here to release your inner child, you're too late. Oh, uh, no offence. <laughs> ah, aura cleansing for beginners. Yes, that starts in the turquoise room in 10 minutes. Can I get you some refreshment while you're waiting? We've got latte, cappuccino, frappuccino, mocha, americano, flat white, fat white, slimline, skinny white, or mango and cauliflower smoothie. All with dairy alternatives if required. A cup of tea. Oh, I'm sorry, we haven't got any tea. The tannins interfere with your chi, apparently. There's a water cooler down the corridor, if you prefer. Fabulous. Down the corridor, first on the right, choose a bean bag and get comfy. Oh, and could I ask you to pop into the gents and wash your hands before we start cleansing your aura? It's just in case you're holding on to any historic effluence. Well, we don't want it flicking on the other participants, do we? Thank you, sir. Have a good time. Ooh. Good morning, the Centre of Self Centre. How can we improve your... Oh, hi, Thor. Where are you? You were meant to be here before the customers. Well, I've just sent one down there and there are five more already on the bean bags. It's okay, I've opened a window. How long will you be? Well, you've only got ten minutes. Well, how long does it take to eat a quarter pounder with cheese? No, I won't tell Angel. If she asks, I'll say it was something to do with chakras. Come in the back door and she won't see you. She's in the blue room releasing inner children. <laughs> yeah, I know. See you soon. Eat quickly. I don't care what Angel says. It can't be good for you to wear a headset all day. There must be all kinds of microwaves or something pouring through my head. But then again, what the hell do I know? We're not expecting anyone in until after the aura cleansing. I'll just leave it off for a few minutes. The original plan was to work in some fancy hotel somewhere. That's what I trained for. I've got a degree in hospitality. That's why I'm so good with the customers. And you come across all sorts in here. Mostly people struggling with some issue or looking for something to fill their empty lives. That's how I found Angel. She used to run these special workshops from home and I saw a flyer in Starbucks. We hit it off straight away. And then once we got to know each other, she offered me a job. It's funny, really. We're not alike at all. But I reckon we forgive each other's quirks with genuine affection. For example, she always shares her vegan chocolates with me when she knows that I sneak out for bacon sandwiches every Friday lunchtime. We keep a spare chair in the corner for emergencies. Sometimes one of the mature ladies will come out of hot yoga a bit confused and need to sit down. Oh, maybe I better wipe it down first. Can't be too careful. No one will know if I have a sit down for five minutes. It was my brother Mickey, you see? That's why I went to Angel's workshop. I loved Mickey. We were chalk and cheese, just like me and Angel. He was the clever one. I was the daydreamer. But we would protect each other to the death. He used to be two years older than me. 25 he was. Now he's younger because I'm, uh, well, 
let's just say I'm over 30. He'll be younger than me forever now. Anyway, they say you're never prepared for it, no matter what age somebody is. But you don't expect it to happen at 25, do you? Nobody was ready, especially Mickey. And it wasn't like he'd done anything wrong either. I mean, he liked a good time, like any young man, and he was never short of a girlfriend, or a boyfriend, for that matter. I remember Mum taking me aside one day and saying, all earnest, like, do you think our Mickey is gay? (laughs) And I said, gay? He's positively exuberant. (laughs) He was, though. Full of life. I think that's what made it so difficult. It was the contrast. So stark. So, one day he wasn't feeling very well. Then the next day he was feeling a bit worse. Then a week later he could hardly get out of bed. At at first he wouldn't go to the doctor. (laughs) You know how men are. He just said it was some kind of bug and took a load of vitamins. But mum kept nagging him until he eventually went. They sent him straight to the hospital for tests, then kept him in for treatment, then sent him home when they couldn't do anything more. Well, they always need the beds, don't they? I still can't pronounce the name of the disease. Maybe I just don't want to say it out loud. Anyway, it's very rare, so you've probably never heard of it. Very rare. Just like Mickey. It sort of ate him from the inside out. You could see him disappearing week after week, getting smaller and smaller in all kinds of ways. There was nothing they could do. We were both still living at home then, so I was with him every day. We're close in our family. He couldn't have been cared for any better if he'd been in a private clinic somewhere. We all took turns in feeding him and washing him and just being there to talk, to laugh, to cry, to help him put updates on Facebook for his friends. That sort of thing. And lots of his friends came round to visit too. He was loved. He really was loved. I think you get the picture. Oh, no missed calls. A little bit of peace for a change. Honestly, sometimes it's madness in here. Enjoy it while you can. (laughs) Our last proper conversation was the night before Mickey passed away. We never really talked like that before. I guess that should have given me a clue that he was near the end. At first, it was just, you know, silly sibling nonsense. We used to have this ridiculous made-up language from when we were kids. Well, Mickey made it up and I followed, as usual. We thought that mum and dad wouldn't understand it so we could talk in secret code. (laughs) It was just stupid, really. Bow, bar, boo, ba bay. Fine, bank, (laughs) boo. We thought we were really clever. Mickey was lying there in bed, propped up on his pillows. I was sitting next to him on the chair and we were speaking our gibberish. And suddenly he stopped and grabbed my hand. He squeezed it really, really tight and he looked into my eyes really strong like he'd never done before and he said, Vivi, do you think there's anything else? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, anything after this? I didn't know what to say. I looked back at him, just steep. He meant it. He really did. 
he needed to know. So I just squeezed his hand and said, I don't know, Mickey, but I really hope so. That was the truth. We'd never talked about religion or spirituality or anything like that. We're just a regular Church of England family, so religion didn't really come into it. But there was something else in Mickey at that moment, and I could see it. He was scared. Really, really scared. I could see it in his eyes. He was afraid that he was about to become nothing. That he'd just be wiped out and turn into dust and distant memories. Bye, Buff Boo. That was the last thing I said to him. He said it back. Oh, silly, I know. I'd better get back to it. If you are enjoying Theatrephonic, we would really appreciate your support. By donating to our Patreon, you can help us produce more frequent episodes as well as more additional content. And by signing up to our Patreon, you will gain instant access to ad-free episodes, blooper reels and Q&A sessions, as well as the opportunity to watch the live recordings and name a character in a play. Visit patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic for more information. That's patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic to get more of what you love. Bum. Bum. Where did I put the headset? Oh, there it is. I wish I could have thought of something clever to say. No, no, that's not right. I wish I could have thought of something real to say. Something we could both have believed in. But the fact is, neither of us had a clue. My brother had been on this planet for 25 years and had no idea why or what it meant. I think that's why I found it so difficult after the funeral. I realised that nobody around me knew what it meant. Not for real. Is there a heaven? A hell? Are we just worm food? Do we come back as something else? I guess Mickey must know by now. Oh, for God's sake! Good morning, the Centre of Self Centre. How can we improve your day? I'm sorry, madam. Angel can't come to the phone right now. She's releasing inner children in the blue room. Oh, uh, no, madam, it's totally consensual. Can I take a message? Uh huh. Yep. Uh huh. Yes, I'll, I'll pass it on. Thank you. She'll be very pleased to hear it. And don't forget to tell your friends. Fabulous. And you. Have a good day. Another satisfied customer. Like me, you see. I picked up that flyer in Starbucks and I went to one of Angel's bereavement workshops. She could see I was struggling and offered me some one-on-one -on -one sessions free of charge. She didn't have to do that. Maybe it was because I was so young at the time. Mostly it was old people at her workshops. Widows who'd lost their partners of 50 years, that kind of thing. Just as sad as my story, of course. There's never a good age for it. Anyway, I told her about that last conversation that me and Mickey had. And how I felt so guilty for having nothing true to tell him. No real hope to give him. That was the problem. I couldn't get over that. So I talked. Angel listened. I cried. <laughs> she gave me tissues. Then she asked me if I knew anything about science. I said, I failed biology, but I was pretty good at art. I don't know why I thought that was relevant. Anyway, 
Angel said that there's a scientific principle that has been proved, and that is that all matter is energy. Every thought, every idea, every emotion, every bit of speech is energy. And all of that exists as a very rarefied form of matter. And it can never be destroyed. That means that every interaction between Mickey and me still existed. Every word he spoke was inside whoever he spoke to. He was in everyone he touched. Every breath he took was still in the air somewhere. It's a scientific fact. I love that idea. It did something to me deep down inside that I can't explain. And for the first time, the guilt started to subside. Then Angel said if I still needed something, she could recommend a shaman that could channel Mickey through a 95-year-old Apache. But I said, no thanks, I'm happy with the science stuff. Then she told me that she was just about to open this place, offered me a job, and the rest is history. That's why I love Angel so much. And that's why I put up with her quirks and her patchouli oil perfume. She changed my life. She's changed a lot of lives, just like that lady on the phone. Look, this is the message I took down. Please send my gratitude to Angel for the wonderful Coping With Stress workshop last week. I now feel that I can carry on. Thank you. She'll like that. Good morning, madam. Welcome to the Centre of Self Centre. Are you here for the aura cleansing workshop? Oh, yes, I thought you might be. It's just about to start, so you don't have much time to prepare, I'm afraid. Thor should be in the turquoise room already. Uh, down the corridor, first on the right, choose a bean bag and get comfy. That's right. Oh, and could I just ask Madam to pop into the ladies and wash your hands first, just in case you're holding on to any historic effluence. Or on second thoughts, there's a shower in the ladies' changing rooms, just next to the toilets. Vegan soap and towels are provided. Have a lovely time. Whew! If ever there was an aura that needed cleansing. Thor will be able to sort her out. He was a plumber before he took this up. That's one of the things I love about this place. You see them come in in all kinds of states and conditions. But when they leave, they're all sort of, I don't know, shiny. I'm not sure half of it even works. Not that I've ever been rebirthed. And I'm not one for wafting smoking sticks around either. But if you believe it, then it's true, isn't it? It's got to be. And I believe that Mickey is everywhere forever. What did he believe? He didn't have a chance to tell me. But I know that he wanted there to be something else. And so there is. Always. Ooh. Good morning, Lisa. Oh, hi, Angel. Have you finished releasing inner children already? Oh, dear. That's the first one you've lost in weeks. Oh, blimey. How far back did they go? Wow. That's impressive. Shall I fetch the rescue remedy? Oh, I don't think we've got any nappies. There's some tenor lady in the changing rooms. Will that do? Okay, won't be a minute. I guess nobody's perfect, but she'll always be my angel. I must remember to top up the dispenser in time for hot yoga. You have been listening 
to self center. Written by Jackie Carrera, with Zoe Cunningham as Vivi. Directed by Emmeline Brayfield. Produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. The Theatre Phonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland. Performed by Jackson Pentland, Molly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the Theatre Phonic podcast, go to catonapiano.uk forward slash theatrephonic, tweet or Instagram us at theatrephonic, or visit our Facebook page. If you would like to support Theatre Phonic and hear interviews and behind the scenes extras, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Thank you for listening.